Pregnancy and COVID-19. Hello everybody and welcome to the conversation. I'm David Schuster, good to have you with us. The Centers for Disease Control is now urging all pregnant women to get vaccinated and they say it has never been more urgent. Uh, pregnant women were not uh, included in the first round of vaccine trials and there has been some reluctancy among them out of fears of miscarriages and the like, but clearly things have changed. Joining us to talk about that is Anna Medeiros Miller. She's the senior health reporter for Insider. And Anna, take us behind a little bit the CDC's decision. What prompted it? Yeah, so for months now, the CDC along with a lot of other major medical organizations have been basically leaving it up to pregnant women and their providers to decide for themselves whether the benefits of the vaccine outweigh the potential risks um, because we don't have clinical trial data yet on that population, just like we do um, for the rest of non-pregnant adults. Um, but a couple things added up to really tip the scale for multiple organizations, including the CDC. Um, the big one being just research does keep continuing to come out uh, in support of the safety and efficacy of the vaccine. We're still, of course, waiting for clinical trial data, but that doesn't mean we don't have a lot of good information on the hundreds of thousands of pregnant people who have gotten the vaccine so far. Um, well, also, go ahead. I was gonna say, what were some of the fears though initially? Was it about mm. uh, miscarriages? Was it about a change in DNA? I know a lot of people are generally anti-vaccine, well, not a lot of people, but some people who are worried about uh, uh, birth facts and, and autism. Yeah, so most of those concerns were in, in unvalidated pretty early yeah. on. I mean, the way that the vaccine is created, Experts, even before this data has come out, were pretty confident that it was going to be safe. It's not a live virus, so like the flu vaccine is recommended in pregnancy. Um, it's not going to enter the cell's nucleus and go into your DNA. Um, it can't cross the placental barrier. Um, so there has been a lot of misinformation about that. And I think that can be exacerbated by this idea that the vaccine um, can produce or does produce, which we want it to, um, antibodies against the virus, or it forces your body to create the antibodies against the virus. And those antibodies do cross the placental barrier in a way that helps protect the future child also from COVID. But that doesn't mean that the vaccine itself crosses the barrier. How much more vulnerable are pregnant women to the Delta variant of COVID than the, the population at large? I don't know the details of the Delta variant susceptibility but I do know that it is um, a big risk for pregnant women. And the, the COVID virus um, in general is, is uh, much more, not much more, but pregnant people are um, at higher risk for hospitalizations, for ventilation, for uh, preterm birth and even death. Whereas when we look at the results of people who've gotten the vaccine, you don't see um, any sort of uh, red flags like that. So in other words, the, the fetus obviously is vulnerable, I suppose, to COVID-19 because if the health of the mother is in some jeopardy, if the mother's having high fevers and, right. and not able to bring in oxygen, obviously that would affect the pregnancy. Right, exactly. And a lot of uh, pregnant people were concerned about the fever risk in a vaccine because that is something we see as a side effect. Um, but then when you think about it, the, 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 it's even more of a risk in COVID-19 to get fever and it's a lot likely to be longer and higher, which is really what's dangerous in pregnancy. Whereas if you get a little bit of a fever from the vaccine, you can take a Tylenol and um, move along and, and be safe. And how prevalent are the, um, the false myths that are out there in general about the COVID-19 vaccines, regardless of whether they're from Pfizer, or Johnson & Johnson, Moderna? I mean, is there much, I sense at least that there's a lot of frustration among the CDC, among the World Health Organization, even the Pope has come out urging everybody to get the vaccine, but it feels like there's still incredible hurdles to convince at least a small part of the population to go ahead and get it. Yeah, I mean, the last data that came out earlier this month said that only 23% of pregnant people have gotten the vaccine, um, which is lower than the population at large. And, you know, understandable because we don't know as much about it, but it is, um, it is scary given the, uh, given the increased risks uh, of COVID when you're pregnant and also, yes, the emerging Delta variant and how contagious that is. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of misinformation and I think, you know, social media really perpetuates that. And these anti-vax groups really know how to strategize and get in to these circles in ways that can kind of get around um, a lot of the you know Facebook restrictions and things like that. Um, I've I reported on one uh, doctor actually who had a miscarriage and had gotten the vaccine, 
And these anti-vax groups really like seized on her story, which she was public about, and and made this link, basically claiming that it was the vaccine that caused the miscarriage. And she had to, you know, go back and and really fact check that for the public and say, you know what, actually, <laughs> I miscarried before I got the vaccine. I just happened to post about it after. But you know, the people that are susceptible to this min- misinformation aren't going to, you know, do that research themselves. And that sounds similar to some of the misinformation about a number of people say, "Oh, well, look at the number of people who have died after getting the vaccine, even though there's a certain percentage when you're vaccinating hundreds of millions of people, a certain number of people were gonna die from diabetes, cancer, health risk, old age, regardless of whether they get the vaccine. And it's almost like there's a conflation of numbers that makes it so much easier for the anti-vaxxers to make an argument than for everybody else to say, no, wait a second, you're, you're mixing apples and oranges here. Yeah, absolutely. It's the classic correlation and not causation. Is there a sense of some sort of campaign that the CDC, other organizations are gonna have to put out other than just saying, okay, now we're recommending and now they're getting the OBGYN organizations on board as well. Is there a larger campaign that they're considering to try to really put out the word to get to that number that you mentioned, the 23%? Yeah, um, I don't know of their you know PSA um, plans, but I do think that it is a big deal that ACOG, um, who represents OBGYNs, is also recommending that uh, that they're probably more than recommending that their members um, urgently. And that wasn't urgently. Um, urgent was the was the word that the CDC used. ACOG. Um, said that their members should enthusiastically recommend the vaccine to their patients. And I think that is really where it will make a big difference because um, one-on-one, if you trust your provider and they can really talk you through why they think that this is safe and effective and helpful for you in pregnancy, uh, can can really hip, tip the scale more than big you know, announcements from organizations that don't really seem in, in your personal lives as much as your own OB. And when one of these organizations comes around and supports this and makes the recommendation, whether it's ACOG or anybody else, does it automatically translate into all of their doctor members saying, okay, I will now have a a conversation with my patients, my pregnant women patients to make sure that they're getting the vaccination? Or are there some doctors who regardless of what the parent organization does, will still say, you know what, we don't know. Yeah, I think it's, it's going to be up to the providers themselves to Decide, you know, how much they want to implement this in these private conversations that we are not privy. Organization yeah. says as a whole. Yeah, I mean the the doctor, I guess, patient relationship that's still a sacrosanct. So we may not get much data in terms of what doctors are really sort of advising. But um, you know, right. talking to doctors and talking to OBGYNs, general practitioners, it almost seems like the medical field still the one thing. I mean, so many doctors. I was just talking to a pulmonologist the other day. Said, you know, there's still so much about COVID-19 about the Delta variant, there's still so much we don't know. Mm -hmm. We don't necessarily know why it strikes certain people one way and other people another way. We don't necessarily know exactly how the vaccine is able to be effective in preventing the larger scale symptoms that people have with COVID-19. And I wonder if that lack of overall knowledge about how things Mm -hmm. are working is somehow contributing to the fear, especially to pregnant women, their, their partners and families who are Naturally anxious about if they're gonna, you know, if they're gonna be any birth defects, if this is gonna be a healthy pregnancy anyway. Right, right. Well, I think that that's important for the providers to spell out. You know, I hope that they're not blanketly saying to their patients, you know, absolutely, this has zero risks. We know everything about it. You 100% should get it. Um, they should be spelling out. You know, there is a lot we don't know, but we do know X, Y, and Z. And I feel comfortable with you taking it because of these reasons. Um, and I've talked to providers, you know, for many months who've had that experience. You know, I don't think that this has tipped the scale for them that much. It's more just like, you know, they were comfortable recommending it earlier. Um, and now bigger organizations are getting on board. But, you know, they've also always said, it's it's complicated and it's a hard decision when you're pregnant. You're right. You are um, dealing with a lot of other issues and anxieties, and this could just be one more. And I did talk to a pediatrician um, early on who was very in support of the vaccine, but she kind of said the one line she would draw is just if somebody is so anxious and so overwhelmed by this idea of putting this something in their body that they don't know about, you know. Then maybe you don't maybe you don't get it because you don't want to add that extra stress. Um, and it also, of course, depends on your circumstance. If you're somebody who can um, be pretty protective and wear a mask and can work from home while you're pregnant and all of that, um, it makes more sense for you to maybe wait for the vaccine than somebody who's 
in a, in a service oriented field interacting with people all day and putting themselves at risk. Real quickly here in general, uh, and you've written a lot about the risk versus benefit analysis. Uh, the benefit certainly is clearly outweighing the risk, at least according to all the major authorities on this issue, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, of course, if you get the vaccine, you get the vaccine. If you don't get the vaccine, that doesn't mean you absolutely get COVID. Um, so I think sometimes we miss that. But if you do get COVID, the risks are significant. Uh, most people do okay, but you, you even if you survive, um, even if you don't have a serious illness, you could end up one of these long haulers, and then you're going into parenthood with brain more brain fog and more fatigue and everything else that when you really need to be your healthiest self. So um, as you can see, I am in support of, of the vaccine and pregnancy. Anna Madaris Miller, she's a senior health reporter for Insider. Anna, thanks so much for doing this. We appreciate it. Thank you. You got it. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.